What are some things I hate about ER nursing? Excuse me, can I get a cup of coffee? Black? Can't you see we talking? White? What's good you guys, NWA here, Nurse Pat. Today we dropping some heat. So some of you may know already that I used to be a flow pool nurse and then I transitioned to the ER uh, last year in October. So I've only been in the ER for about 10 months, AKA a baby ER nurse. I was a nurse on the floor for about three and a half years prior to. So things were drastically different when I transitioned. What is that? Oh shit, what is that? Now both good and bad, so don't think that I hate the ER altogether. If that was the case, you know, I would have been left. No matter what the fees or penalties. I hate it here! I wanna go home! This video will be about the things that I personally don't really like about the ER. And this isn't to bash on my hospital or anything, this is more of like a generalization. And there's no particular order to these. One, when the ER is super busy, and the waiting room is really packed, there's a lot of pressure to move patients via transferring them or discharging them. One of the metrics or quality indicators the hospital looks at is the amount of time a patient spends in the ER. Prolonged stays makes us look bad. And there's also been studies where uh, the longer a patient stays in the ER before admission, the poorer the prognosis and mortality rate for the patient. So now I definitely understand why the ER has to try their best to push the patients to the floor. It's not that they don't want to take care of the patient, it's because they have other patients that are waiting for them. Literally. I personally don't like the feeling of being hounded on and, and pressured to send patients up when I'm still behind, you know, on my charting or patient care. Um, it doesn't feel good when I'm like behind on meds, especially for that patient that I'm about to push up. It feels like I'm being negligent or something. But the fact of the matter is I have to prioritize what's more urgent or emergent. And then, you know, once that patient's finally gone via admission or discharge, you get a new patient within minutes of the room being, I should say, express cleaned. <laughs> Nursing units on the floor have the luxury to basically close the doors whenever they have either no beds or they don't have enough nurses for ratio. The ER pretty much has to stay open no matter what. The main thing that we could do is go on diversion, which basically the hospital diverts the ambulances to go to different hospitals. But that doesn't mean that we're closing all doors altogether. People who walk in can also become a patient no matter what, even if we're on diversion. This happens when the charge nurse deems that it is unsafe for us to take on further load. However, this only lasts one hour. And I'm not sure how, how much is the max amount that a hospital can go on diversion. I did hear that we do get dinged every time by the county we do go on diversion. So the charge nurse really tries not to unless she really or he really feels like uh, we got a pretty unsafe condition going on. Two. Working with the pediatric population. No. I personally had no idea that I'd be seeing like a good amount of pediatric patients, uh, especially since our hospital isn't even a, a pediatric receiving facility. I never had experience working with pediatrics, kids, babies, or any of that in my nursing experience, besides like clinical rotations uh, while I was in school. So this was very new to me and I don't have any kids of myself, or at least I think so. Just kidding, just kidding. Even though I'm PAL certified, pediatric advanced life support, I still feel really nervous when I get uh, really sick patients that are babies toddlers. I remember my first pediatric code that was scarring experience for sure. Now I can't tell you the details but this patient was still a toddler and it you know it it was horrifying like I I wasn't even a part of like a legit team member of the code I was mainly a runner just getting things for them but just seeing everything happening it was like it was really scarring. Um, I remember like after everything was done I I was like shook I was stunned for like two two more hours afterwards uh, I felt like my mind was like numb it was just such a 
a tragic experience. Like in my mind, I was like, did that really just happen? And you know, I can't even imagine how the nurses who had, you know, little children at home felt when this happened. Terrible, you know, people were crying. Nurses were crying. Now for the less sick pediatric population, I very much dislike with a passion working with toddlers. You know, they're cute and all, but they are one of the most difficult populations I've worked with because they are like the most resistant and defiant patients. I try my best to refuse everything and scream at your ears. Some of the worst things in my opinion you have to do for a toddler is IVs, Foley's, and helping with stitches. I don't even want to try with that stuff. Honestly, I prefer to help hold down. Now, with pediatric population, you could also have the hawking parents that are looking at your every move, questioning everything, and uh, that could be nerve-wracking at times. I remember having this appendicitis kid that was really dehydrated, and I tried to get an IV. Unfortunately, I missed twice. And mom is just super pissed, and she was like, she yelled and she was like, can you get someone who knows what they're doing? Uh, and I was like, ah, oh, shit, you know? It didn't feel good. Uh, you know, I don't blame her for being scared and everything, but, you know, it doesn't feel good. Not all parents are like that, though. Some are actually really helpful and supportive. Three, sometimes dealing with psych patients or altered patients can be, you know, pretty overwhelming. Now, I thought that I already dealt with psych patients and, like, altered dementia patients all the time on the floor. But the ER honestly is, is a whole nother level. I think most ERs have a, a, a psych zone that you could be assigned to. Sometimes you'll get some seriously crazy patients that send chills down your spine. Legit doing some you know, weird exorcist type shit. I'm like, please, someone give me some holy water. Please, I need some stat holy water. In my way through the hood, sipping this yak. Niggas about to get blown with the Mac. I'm like, what? What? What is this? Come on, man. Like, I had this patient out doing some weird exorcist type shit. You know, we had no idea what was going on. She was like grabbing everything. She grabbed her blanket, took a big, big ass yonk out of the freaking blanket. She bit in, broke. And then she was trying to put her whole, whole hand in her mouth, like trying to do some Gok Gok 3000 or something. Like, oh, I was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you'll get stuff like that, and you're just, you're just like, what is going on in their mind? Or you'll get, you know, some people that are super drunk or altered from different drugs. Sometimes you'll get a pleasant drunk or someone acting a fool. But then sometimes you get some that are, you know, extremely aggressive. And, Abusive both, both verbally and physically. And I swear sometimes some of them be testing my patients. I'm like, you finna get transferred straight to heaven, my guy. Four. In most cases, when the ER transfers a patient, we don't get to see the progression of the patient's care. We don't know if they improve or not. We don't know if they survive or not. We just ship them out. For instance, seeing a patient improves after their surgery, different procedures, different course of medication treatment. You know, we don't see if that really helps them. We mainly see them in the beginning during their acute suffering stage. The ER's primary role is to stabilize the patient, figure out what the heck is going on with the patient uh, via, you know, labs, diagnostics, imaging, get a, you know, quick start on their care via like antibiotics or different smaller procedures, and then ship them out to where they need to go. Five, and this one's important, I personally don't like how it feels like ER nurses and bedside nurses are enemies. Each side hates each other. And being a nurse that has been on both sides, I've been a bedside nurse and I've been an ER nurse, I understand both sides. I wish everyone did, but that's not the case. You'll have a lot of ER nurses that have only been to ER, you'll have a lot of bedside nurses that will never go to ER, and you know, that's just how it is. Some bedside nurses think, ER nurses are lazy, barely know their patients, don't do full assessments and charting, skip on meds, and just try to push patients to the floor. Here's the reality. ER nurses can literally have four times or more patients during their shift than a bedside nurse. When constantly being forced to take on new patients via the waiting room or ambulances, you really don't have time to be like super thorough and meticulous with your assessments and your charting and all that stuff you really don't have the time. And there are simply other things that you have to prioritize that are way more urgent or emergent than, you know, giving the patients 
potassium pills or something like that. It, it, it's Unless the potassium is critically low, we're not gonna do it if we have other things we gotta do. I don't care if the patient didn't take the nightly Lipitor, nightly Colace that they usually do. When I got this other patient here sat in the 80s, that needs my care. Okay, now flip side. Some ER nurses think bedside nurses are basically spoiled and pansies and you know should have all the time in the world to accept these patients and they're just trying their best to avoid it or to delay it as much as possible. Here's the reality. A bedside admission from the ER takes a long time. There's a decent amount of questions more that we have to ask for admission than the ER does. And most of the time for the ER, the triage nurse does it for you. So you gotta have like at least 10 to 15 minutes to ask these questions and chart them. And then you gotta do a legit full head to toe assessment to chart. And then after you release those sign and holds, you got a whole bunch of random meds that the patient usually takes. And it's usually like a freaking Skittles bag worth of meds. Oh, and don't get me started on the patients that gotta take them one at a time or the ones that are crushed with applesauce. Oh not miss that and you gotta do that while getting bombarded with you know patient call yes. lights or other scheduled medications yada 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 both are a different type of busy that can be stressful in a different way so i respect both sides so yeah this is my little rant about the er some of which i knew before coming in but you know i definitely don't have any regrets about joining the er this is not a video you know geared towards how i want to leave the er or anything like that in fact, I'll probably have a video in the future talking about the things that I do like about the ER. Comment below if you want to share anything or have any questions. Be sure to like and subscribe to support your boy. As always, stay safe, stay humble. I'm out.